Hey there guys, welcome back to another video with me, the Seattle Data Guy. For those who don't know me, a quick background, I work as a technology consultant, specifically focusing on data and cloud infrastructure. So I've helped companies in various fields, including finance, insurance, transportation, SaaS, e-commerce, and a few other industries develop their data infrastructure using more modern tools, as well as migrating them to the cloud and other projects that help them utilize their data quickly so they can make more data-driven decisions. I started this business back in 2017 and have been growing it ever since, uh, both socially as well as increasing the number of clients that I have. With all the various experiences that I've had, it's given me the opportunity to see a lot of problems come up, uh, oftentimes repeating themselves, whether you're working with a seven-figure business or a billion-dollar business. Uh, I want to share some of those problems that I've seen so far, uh, specifically focusing on data engineers and talking about the five mistakes I often see new data engineers make um, when they're developing their first ETLs and data warehouses. So with that, let's go into the five mistakes new data engineers make when they're developing data systems. First, let's talk about the first problem that I often see, uh, which is just building unmaintainable systems. I think this is very common, especially if you haven't learned a lot of the best practices, both for software engineering as well as data engineering, because you often just build code that works. You don't focus on making code that is reproducible or maintainable, but instead you just kind of make code that works. This often leads to you using just scripts or cron or other forms of kind of patch together systems um, that will fall apart as soon as you leave the company. This is a major problem because you often spend a lot of time developing these systems and you might think that they'll run even when you leave, but oftentimes they fall apart very quickly. And as a data consultant, I've definitely come into a few companies where I've had to kind of re-put together these systems um, due to the fact that they were just kind of patched together in the past without some sort of clear plan for future development. So this is just one of the many problems that you'll run into. Another one that I've seen is people assuming that data is accurate from the source. So oftentimes as data engineers, we're scraping data from applications and other sources where in theory, this data should be true, right? In theory, end users are interacting with this data on a daily basis. So you would assume that this data is true. However, oftentimes small errors occur on a daily basis, uh, whether it be state abbreviations that are wrong or, or data systems that are just not synced correctly that ends up leading to bad data. So assuming your data is correct from your source is usually a bad call. Uh, there are all sorts of things that can happen uh, that can make your data inaccurate. So usually you will need to create some sort of QA system to ensure that this does not happen. For the third problem, what you will often see is people will build overly complex logic that is all kind of crammed together in one like SQL query. This can be very difficult to maintain and it's somewhat related to the first problem, but it's slightly different. You can make a system that is arguably not patched together but you could be writing SQL queries that are very difficult for future data engineers to read and understand. This is often caused by the fact that people try to put way too much logic in a single query, leading to you know, thousand line queries that are very difficult to dismantle and understand what is occurring in every section of said query. I'm not saying that you will never have to write a thousand line query. I'm just saying that occasionally, it's not a bad idea to think through the query, think about the different steps you're going through, and consider if you should break it up into smaller staging steps. Again, the goal here is to create maintainable systems that in the future, uh, engineers can come and understand quickly without needing to wrap their brains around you know, 40 CTEs and uh, 30K statements. So for the fourth problem, what I often see is people don't ask why they're building what they're building. Oftentimes as data engineers and engineers in general, we are asked to build systems and scrape data and create data sets, but we don't always remember to ask why and what is the business impact. Now there are multiple reasons this will benefit you if you do this. One, as a data engineer, we are often overwhelmed with the various data requests just because there are so many various data applications that you can pull from. Um, and it just keeps getting bigger. The, the number of, of data sources we can pull from and what we can do with that data is just expanding at a rate that is becoming more and more difficult for companies to manage. And so one, this helps you just prioritize what you should be scraping. Two, it also helps you understand how you should be structuring the data because if you don't understand why your end user or client or analyst needs the data, it, it can be very difficult to understand what shape that data should be in, or if you should scrape more data besides just that one data set. This often leads to future work um, or you not scoping out the work correctly because maybe you need to scrape even more data. Um, so understanding what they're going to be doing with this data is another key concept. 
again, we need to go beyond just building and developing pipelines. We need to also kind of understand the business case because without the business case, it can be very difficult to build and develop systems. And finally, for the fifth issue that I've seen and somewhat related to the fourth is not understanding the user or developing data infrastructure that is not user friendly. What I mean by this is sometimes it can be tempting, especially with modern tools, to leave data in very unstructured or semi-structured formats because data warehouses allow that. We can often store data in arrays and JSON maps, which can be very tempting to do because it's very easy and doesn't require any further transformation. And in some cases, this is fine with the concept of data lakes becoming more prevalent, but you also need to think about your end user. Is your end user SQL savvy, or at least do they have the tools that can help parse it for them? Because in some cases, there are tools that make this easy. And not understanding that end user and what tools they have available may lead to you making poor decisions on how to store that data. So you need to think about what are the end user's capabilities and how they're going to look at this data. Uh, even things like using dates to kind of track start and end dates can be very difficult for people who maybe don't understand data modeling and how you're using that start and end date to represent some sort of time window that then needs to be queried on by using some sort of between clause. This seems very natural to us as data engineers who live and breathe data models, but can be very complex if that's not your day-to-day -day work. Uh, again, this depends on the analyst. And I've definitely found that analyst SQL and query abilities range pretty widely. But that's why it's important just to look and think about your end user when you're developing these systems. So these are just five of probably many mistakes new data engineers make as they're kind of entering the field. There's a lot of challenges that new data engineers face just in terms of the fact that data engineering in itself isn't really taught in college, or at least not when I was going to college. In turn, most data engineers are forced to learn a lot of these best practices when they join their first data engineering team. Playing some of the problems you will face as a new data engineer and probably brought up some old pains for people who have been doing data engineering for a while. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe as we are trying to make more videos around technology, data consulting, data engineering, data science, and so forth. And please, you know, feel free to leave some comments below on maybe some challenges you've had as a data engineer or some things you're trying to learn as a data engineer um, or just a consultant or whatever industry you're looking into. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys again at the next video.